Welcome to PTC Express Video Tip of the Month. My name is Leo Green. Today we're going to continue with surface modeling techniques, part three. We're developing a turbine blade where the defining data for the turbine blade was imported point data to define the centerline plane of a variable thickness turbine blade. We've got a we've got the hub, we've got the blade itself, we've got a fillet at the root. Now we're going to close out the top of the blade. Looking at the blade, you can see that we have the blade geometry largely defined and we have a surface that runs over the top of the blade, but they're not intersecting. So what we need to do is extend the top of the blade in just a little bit. So let's go extend just a touch. That's a little too far. We'll maybe make it O2 and holding the shift key down we'll be able to extend the rest of the blade around. Now that we've got it extended far enough up what we can do is we can pick the quilt pick the second quilt with the control key down and ask them to intersect. Now you'll notice that we don't get a preview here and that's because it's still open on the far side and with the intersect directions assigned thus it doesn't make any sense. This arrow is indicating what piece of the top surface is to be kept and this arrow is indicating what piece of the entire quilt to be kept. Both of these arrows are facing in the wrong direction. By assigning the correct direction the result then is no longer ambiguous and ProEngineer can provide for a very nice intersect. So now we've got the top defined, you can tell by the dark purple arrow or the dark purple lines and now what we have to do is close out the outside. That's largely going to be a revolved surface. So let's make that revolved surface now. Revolve surface, specify the placement and we'll place it on the same plan that we did the the hub curve on. As far as references are concerned, we'll choose that bottom face as well as the end of the curve and the top edge of the hub quilt. That should do it for us. Line, we'll come over, go straight down, come over this direction and we'll go up and through this point. As far as dimensioning scheme is concerned, I'm going to put an angle here. We'll give this some distance and that'll do it. Box the whole thing, right mouse modify and let's call that 85 and the other one maybe a quarter inch. Enough and the axis to spin around and that gives us a revolve surf but I don't want it to go 360. As a matter of fact I want it to be the same as the other so what I'll pick it I'll do is I'll pick that box hold the shift key down and pick a vertex and make it through next or through selected there. Call that done and now I can add this to a new quilt. Pick this quilt control key pick the other quilt and ask for them to merge. Specify my arrows. If I go to shade now you'll see that it's nice and boxed in. Alright, so this is almost ready to solidify. All I need to do is close out these two faces and I'll do that using the fill. Edit, fill or I can select a sketch if I had one already but if I don't I can define one on the fly. Select now use edge and I'll go with a uh, I guess I can go with a loop of edges but I'll, I'll just choose single. Single edges and I'll just pick the edges around the loop that I want to fill. There's my fill on that side and then we want one more fill on the other. Reference, define, and this plane is going to be on a plane that goes through the center and also through maybe that vertex. Using this as a reference will be fine and then use edge. And again single will choose 
the edges that we would like to use for the fill. Now that I've got the two faces filled, it's a matter of now quilting it all together. Pick the quilt, control pick another quilt, merge, and control pick another quilt, and now it could be solidified. But obviously this isn't the whole of it, this is just one of the blades. So now if I pick the whole quilt, control C, control V, middle mouse, I now have a feature that I can pattern around an axis. Picking now the axis, and now I can specify however many I want. Maybe I'll start with five equally spaced all the way around, and then I can right click, select one, and then solidify. Now I have one solidified, right click and pattern, and that will automatically reference pattern, middle mouse. I now have a solid model of all the blades. Let's go now to the layer tree, take the curves as well as the surfaces and hide them both. And now if I go to the wireframe display, you see it's a solid model with all the blades. Now the curve that came in as a curve through points didn't go on the curve layer. Let's add it now. Right click, layer properties, and what we're going to do, this is a good tip by the way, change the filter here to curve and I can just box my entire model. And there it goes. So what if I want to have more? Let's go and edit. I want instead of five, Let's make it, say, 9. There you go. So, I hope a little of this made sense to you. I hope that uh, you now have a little more boldness when moving with your surface models. My name's Leo Green, and hope to see you again next time at PTC Express Video Tip of the Month. So long now.